Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a swash text effect in Illustrator. Before we get started with this video, let's look and see what it is that we're going to be doing. I'm going to show you how you can create this swash effect and attach it to a piece of text. So we're going to type the word love and then create this swash here and also the heart that goes with it. And having done that, we're going to join everything together and we're going to apply some appearances to give us the final look of this text and its swash. To create the swash effect, I'm going to create a new document. I'm making a letter size document in landscape orientation, RGB color. Because this is vector, it really doesn't matter too much how big the document is. I'm going to click the type tool. I'm going to type the word love with a capital L. I'm going to select over the text. I'm going to increase the point size quite considerably. So this is about 210 points of type. Now I'm going to get the font I want to use. So again, I'm going to select the text tool, select over my type, and I'm using a font called Lobster. So I'm just going to type Lobster and go and grab my Lobster 1.4 font. The reason why I chose this font is it's got a sort of scripty look to it. It's really quite heavy, so it will take quite a heavy swash. And the exit from the letter E around to where I'm going to create the swash is a pretty good shape. It's kind of a nice font to use. It's also a free font and you can go and grab it for yourself too. And I kind of like to do things like that. So this is the font Lobster. It's available from a site called Dafont, D-A-F-O-N-T dot com. It's called Lobster Font. So you can go and grab it. It's a public domain font. So you're licensed to use that. So having created this, I'm going to open my layers palette and lock down my font so it's not going to move so I can start drawing things out. Now I'm going to rough it out with a pencil tool. So I'm just going to go here and grab a sort of blue paint color and no fill. And I just want to rough out where this is going. So I'm going to grab actually the pencil tool, not the smooth tool, and just rough out this heart shape. Now, this is not perfect and it's not meant to be. It's just going to give me an idea as to where everything is going to go. So when I come here with the pen tool to create the swash, it's going to be a little bit easier to draw. Now, the top of the letter E is going to end up at the bottom part of the swash. So I'm going to come out of my letter E. I'm going to come up and around to here. But in actual fact, I know that I want this to be a little bit more of this kind of loop because I want to follow along the line of the edge of the heart. And then the other end is going to come something like this. So there's a rough look at how I'm going to draw my swash. And I'm just going to lock all of that down because I don't want it to move while I'm actually doing my pen work. I'm going to grab the pen tool. I don't want any fill, but I do want my pink stroke because that's the color I'm going to be working in. So I'm going to start with this heart and I'm just going to drag up. I don't like to spend a lot of time actually finessing a pencil drawing because I can see where the problems are and I can generally fix those as I'm actually doing the drawing. I don't need to fix them with the sketch too much. I'm just going to click down at the bottom of the heart, click again here and drag upwards just to finish this edge off and then come back all the way to the beginning and just draw in that right curve of the heart. Now I've lost the left curve and the reason is because this handle is down here. I'll hold Alt or Option and now I can just start to redraw that. Just move the handle back up into position. For now I'm just going to call that good for the heart. In a minute I'm going to turn all the blue off and we can make it look just a little bit better even than it is now. Again the pen tool. Again I'm going to just click and drag here to start my drawing. I'm going to come down about here to pick up this curve here. I want this to be a really big curve into the bottom here. And I can probably do it all in one sweep. I'm just going to make that curve. 
Now I want to head up here and you can see that the line is not coming with me and the reason is because this handle needs to be moved. So again I'm holding Alt or Option and dragging the handle around. Then make this point and to be able to head back here I'm going to move this handle as well. Alt or Option drag on the handle, head back here. I'm going to pin it down at this point with an anchor and then go all the way back up to the beginning. Just click and drag and then click back on my starting point. Now let's go to Layers Palette and I can turn off all of the blue layers. I do want my text though, so let's leave my text in place. So now we just need to work at finishing this off. I'm going to select over these shapes and just flip the stroke and fill so I can see how everything is going to look. I need to do a little bit of work down here, so I'll press the letter Z and just zoom into this place. Press the letter A to bring up this direct selection tool and then just start nudging this anchor point into position. And I want it to look as if it's sort of an extension of the heart itself. So I'm thinking that's pretty good. Let's press Control or Command Zero to have a look. Well, this edge is not looking very good and it's also not nearly close enough to the heart. So again, I'm just nudging it with the keyboard. I'm just using the up and left arrow keys on the keyboard just to nudge it into position. And then I'm just going to drag this out. I want this to look like it's following the edge of the heart. Well, of course, it would look a whole lot better if the heart looked a bit better before we start working out how we're going to follow the edge of it. So I'm just going to improve the heart just a little bit. It doesn't need to be perfect. This is sort of a hand-drawn swash look. We're not looking for perfection, but we are looking for something that is reasonably good. Just dragging over this line here because that allows me to adjust it by dragging. If it takes off on me, I'm just going to press Control or Command Z to undo it and put it back where it came from. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with my heart and I just need to get the swash to match up with it. I'm going to zoom in up here. Again, targeting the direct selection tool and just pulling this a little bit closer. I'm just going to zoom out, double check this while well, it's not quite close enough. Okay, that's looking pretty good to me. So I'm going to hold down the space bar as I just move up here because I need to fix this area. Again, I'm going to zoom in, but I want to see what's happening here as well. Again, the direct selection tool, this white arrow tool. Let me just flip this up. I think if I come over the tail of the E, it's just going to make life a little bit easier later on. And again, there's an anchor point here. I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key because I want to adjust this handle. What I'm looking for here when I'm doing this is when I hold the Alt or Option key, I want to see a plus sign there. I do not want to see a black arrow and a white arrow. If I see a black arrow and a white arrow, I'm going to let go of everything and try again because the black and white arrows are, I'm about to move that point and make a duplicate of it at the same time. And I don't want a duplicate. What I want is the handle to move and that's a different mouse indicator entirely. It's the plus symbol. So I'm just going to look at this here, see if I can get a reasonable sweep. Sort of want my swash to thicken up as it comes around a little bit and right now that's not quite happening. I can get rid of this point later on. I think I'm probably just going to opt to do that. We'll just knock that off later. Control zero, just have a look. Now you can spend a little bit more time finessing this if you like, but what you're looking for is the swash that you're happy with. Basically that's all you're looking for. 
Having done that, I'm now going to free up my love line, which I had locked down. I'll just move it up a little bit towards the top. And I can also just select and delete all the blue bits. So all that's left is my text and my heart and my swash. I'm going to select over the text and we're going to create outlines. So I'll choose type, create outlines. And that just creates the text as outline, so they're vector shapes. Now I'm going to select over everything now with the selection tool. And I'm going to the Pathfinder and I'm just going to click Unite. And that just joins everything up. And this is the problem I just need to deal with right now. So let's zoom in here. Now that we've got these two joined together, we can see what our problems are. And there are anchor points here and there's this one here that I really don't want. So I'm just going to go and get rid of it by selecting the Delete Anchor Point tool. And you can probably solve the rest of it by just selecting the Smooth tool and just drag over this a few times just to smooth it out. The Smooth tool is really your best friend at the moment when you need to smooth out lines. Anywhere you see that there are some sort of ugly bumps, the Smooth tool is going to deal with it for you much easier than having to draw it yourself. So now our swash and our text are all done and we're ready to apply some appearances to this to give it the final look of the text that we came here to create. So I'm going to select over all of the text and we're going to the Appearance panel. I'm just going to bring it out here. You'll see that there are no appearances available for this because we're working with a group. You can see the group here. This is all the objects that have been grouped together. When I clicked on the Pathfinder, some of them have been joined together and the whole lot has been grouped together. Well, what we need to do is to click on Content so that we open up this area and now we can go and do things with this entire group. So I'm going to add a white stroke. I'm going to click on the stroke link here. I'm going to click on round cap dashed line and I've got 0 and 6 which is a pretty good setting here for my dash and gap. 0 points for the dash, 6 for the gap and I'm just going to start increasing my point size. And probably 4 points is sufficient but you can see that the dots right now are on the very edge of the text. I want to bring them in. So to do that I'm going to choose Effect, Path, Offset Path. I'm going to click on the Preview and that just hides everything except a little bit over here. And the reason is that the dots are now way outside the shape. So I'm just going to click in here and start decreasing this until I bring the dots inside the shape. So I'm on minus four points here, which I think is probably a good setting. It's just the dots are way too big. So I'll click OK and now that I've seen what my dots look like, I'm just going to shrink them in size to three points. And if I want to, I could close up this gap just a little bit as well. So I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. Having done that, I want to add a couple of lines outside my shape. So I'm going to click here on the Add New Stroke icon. And what that does is it adds a new stroke and it does it the exact same specifications as the previous one, which is not what we want. So I'm going to come in here and first of all click off the dashed line because I don't want it to be dashed. I also don't want it to be white, so I'm just going to click here and give it a darker red colour. It's a three point line and you can see it around the very edge of the type. Well, I want it to be a little bit further out than that, so I'm going to choose Effect, Path, Offset Path. You can see now it's 10 points offset. Again, too much. We'll just bring it down a little bit. So I've got it offset by three points and I'll click OK. But I'm just going to bring down the size of it to two points because I think three points was a bit too much. And now I'm just going to duplicate this. So I'm going to drag that stroke down onto the new icon here, which gives me the same stroke right on top of the old one. So I want to move it a little bit outside of everything. I already have an offset path option for it, so I'm going to click to edit its path, click on preview, and instead of three points, I'm going to wind this one up a little bit so we get a sort of double line around the text. 
Now I'm thinking it's too far out, so I'm just going to bring this into 5, and I'm going to go and get this one and bring this in to 2. That's a better effect. Now that I've finished pretty much with this, a couple of things are just screaming at me. One is that the V and the E are on top of each other, and the heart has ended up on top of the swash. Well, that's pretty easy to solve. I'm going to go and get the selection tool. I'm just going to click over the heart. Now, I need to make sure that I get the heart only and not the rest of the shapes. And I'm just going to move it out of the way a little bit. I'm going to do the same with the letters L, O and V. So let's go and isolate these. This is the O and the V, and this is the letter L. So I'm going to select all of those and just drag them or nudge them a little out of the way. Now I'm also thinking that I could probably do a little bit of work here. I've just grabbed the direct selection tool and I'm just going to move the bottom of the heart up a little bit to try and even out the spacing between the swash and the heart itself. So there's our finished illustration. We've created a swash, we've attached it to the letter E and we've made it look as if it were always there and we've bumped a heart into the end of the swash to give it an interesting effect. I'm Helen Bradley, thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.